We are halfway through with the moon challenge and it's been a pleasure sharing this with you. Good morning. I'm up early at dawn today to see the end of the full moon night. It's a transition day when the moon starts becoming more of a night object. As you remember, it rose with the sunset yesterday and it has set just now on the west with the sun rising in the east. You might hear some birds in the background and that is quite a pleasure to see while I was just witnessing the moon going down on the west side. The birds were going out to start their day while the moon was going below the horizon. It was a collection of spectacular moments as the sun rose in the east. I've shared with you before that the sun is pretty tiny in the sky and you can see it had a very tiny size. While looking at this beautiful view, I turned around to where my back was and in that direction I could see the moon going down on the west horizon. It was still slightly above the horizon, but this was an amazing view to see both the sun and the moon almost full in the sky. This is a particularly lovely moment which I hardly ever miss on full moon nights. This end signifies that now the moon will set after moonrise. So it will spend most of its time in the night sky and therefore I can officially call it a night object. While I was looking at this beautiful view, I could imagine the sun's rays passing by me and the earth and going to the moon to illuminate its beautiful visage. This is quite a realization that it's not just ray diagrams that we see in the books, it is reality. And this picture that I've shared with you previously actually does happen. So I had sunlight coming from this direction and in the morning, we were looking this way. The moon was at this position where all of the sunlight was on this face and we were also looking at that face. So we had a full moon. Of course, this could also see certain important astronomical events. And these would be lunar eclipses. If you remember the position of the sun, earth and the moon on a lunar eclipse night, this is how it looks. In this not to scale diagram, the light of the sun and the shadow of the earth are approximately shown so as to explain to you how the optics of things are. So with the sun shining on the earth and the moon behind it in its orbit, there may be a chance that the moon may pass through the earth's shadow. As you would know, a shadow is usually composed of a darker area called the umbra and the lighter area called the penumbra. Now, if the moon does pass through the umbra or penumbra of the Earth's shadow, we will have something called a lunar eclipse. If you come to know of any in the future, make sure you don't miss having such a spectacular view. This is a picture of a total lunar eclipse and the reddish hue is so mesmerizing. It is actually quite enhanced in this picture and the moon does go quite dark on this particular night. The reddish hue is more because of some of the red light of the sun passing by the Earth's atmosphere and getting to the moon. Here's another beautiful series of pictures in which the moon has been captured as it moved across the sky while the shadow of the Earth slowly covered it and it went to a total lunar eclipse. Here you can see the shadow slowly waning off. And now let's imagine how the lunar eclipse may look like from the moon. Well, for anybody watching from the moon, it will be a solar eclipse with the earth covering the sun. The earth would be a very big object in the sky and it would cover the sun for a substantial amount of time. In this, you can also see this slightly reddish ring around the earth which signifies the atmosphere which is filtering off most of the blue light and letting off the scattered red light onto the surface of the moon. If you look back at the uh, diagram, you will notice that the moon will seem very nice and red and dark during the time that it is in the 
umbral region of the earth shadow however there is also a time when the moon may pass through the penumbral region you'll remember that the moon's orbit is inclined to the earth's orbital plane by about 5 degrees so sometimes the moon is either too high or too low to be a part of an eclipse because it may not pass through either the umbra or the penumbra of the earth however we are actually getting close to these nodal points where lunar eclipses are possible here you can see the node is so inclined that this coinciding line is making the earth sun and the moon align in this case we will have a solar eclipse and since the moon doesn't take too much time to go around to the full moon place we do have big chances of there being lunar eclipses let's take an example a lovely lunar eclipse happened on june 15 2011 when the moon was seen really dark on that particular night the moon passed through the earth's umbra and you can see its orbit took it almost through the center of the dark umbra of the earth's shadow this is the penumbra and you can see it is slightly lighter this was one of the darkest eclipses of the recent times in a slightly different look at it the creator of eclipsewise.com the famous eclipse chaser fred espinock has drawn this diagram where you can see the same thing the moon's outline is shown passing through the outlines of the earth's umbra and the penumbra here this will be a total eclipse of the moon now if you look at the eclipse coming up on june 5th next month you'll see that the moon hardly passes through the umbra there will be an eclipse and this will be a very small partial eclipse in which the moon doesn't even pass through the umbra but goes partially through the penumbra of the earth this is this is going to be a very faint eclipse and you may or may not catch it if you are looking at it only with your naked eyes so you can see that although this is an eclipse the conditions are quite correct it may not result in a great spectacle so therefore look out for total lunar eclipses and make sure you don't miss them there will be a annular solar eclipse following this lunar one on the 21st of june and following that there will be another lunar eclipse in july so this is quite a month coming up in which because the earth is at a proper node we'll be seeing two lunar eclipses and a solar eclipse happening we are looking forward to the annular solar eclipse which will happen on 21st june and will be seen very well from all over india we have been together halfway through the challenge now let us continue and see how the phases rewind stay with us and we'll have more fun in the moon challenge